to a lot of Houdini users, VEX is extremely scary to get started with. But once you get used to it and start learning it, you can actually use it to create some complex shapes like this, all procedurally inside of VEX. So let's go ahead and we're gonna rebuild this setup to create something similar to this. Now, it won't have to be the shape, like I said, procedural, and you can create whatever shape you want but we'll drop in a geometry node or not. Well, that was a great start. Guess Houdini is scared of Vex as well. Let's go ahead and try this again. Drop in a geometry node, and we're gonna start off with a line. So the gist of this is we're going to use a, an object to sweep a line, but we're gonna use Vex to create a ramp that's going to affect the P scale, and that's gonna drive the shape of our object. So we just need a line here and then we'll do a resample, drop that in and we'll drop this length down to something like, I don't know, 0.3. And we also need this curve U attribute. So we need to utilize that in the wrangle. So from there, we're gonna drop in an attribute wrangle. And we're gonna, like I said, affect the P scale. So we'll do at P scale equals, and let me actually pop this out. So if I press Alt E while inside that window, the VEX window, it will pop out the uh, window that we're in. It also works for anything else. So if I hit Alt E there, see I popped out a VEX window. Anywhere that there's a black box here it is a VEX window. So we'll go ahead and jump back to our attribute wrangle and look at our P scale. So at P scale equals and then to create a ramp, we'll do a ch, a channel ramp, ch, a r a a m p. If I can talk, so channel ramp, and then we just want to name it whatever we want to name the uh, the ramp, I guess. So we'll just do scale, and then we want to set the attribute that we're going to actually be using, which is going to be the curve U attribute that I said. So at curve U, and then we'll close that off and then end our line. If we hit control and enter, it's going to just run the code. So we can just click, uh, apply and accept. And if we click this little button right here now, you're gonna see that we have a channel ramp. So our ramp right here, it's named our scale, whatever you name here is what it's gonna be called. And now if I come over to our geometry spreadsheet, you can see our P scale. And as I put in a point here and move it around, you can see that our points or our values are actually moving around, which is what we're looking for. So, and let me just turn on our points here so we can see this. And I'm gonna jump the length up here as well. So let's put it to like four. And let's actually drop this down to like, not 0.3, but 0.03. Maybe not that much, 0.04. So from here, all we need to do is create a sweep node. And let's have that wired from the wrangle and not into first input. And let's create a circle. And make sure it's a polygon. And let's just up the divisions here to like 40. Just give us something nice and smooth. And then we can put that into the backbone there. And we see our sweep. Sorry, I did that backwards. We went the wrangle into the backbone and the cross section to be the circle. So we see now that our circle is being swept along the line here. And let's go ahead and turn off our points actually. As I change this around, you can see that we are getting a change in our shape, which is exactly what we're looking for. I can affect this however I want. I can add more points in here. It's a little bit weird, it's reversed right now, so let's go ahead and put in a reverse and in the wrong spot again. So now this is set up properly. And then we can also put in a uh, poly extrude. And we'll just up the distance a little bit here and we'll output the back to close off our shape. And let's go ahead and make something a little bit more interesting. So maybe let's set this to a B spline. 
Oops. I'm going to create a new one there. Let's drop this down a little bit. Let's maybe come up here. Create. Let's set this to a B spline as well. Create another point here. Now we got kind of a a weird, interesting shape going. Let's go ahead and set this first one to a B spline as well. And now we've got this kind of cool shape going on. That's something like a, like a little vase. So something that's super quick and easy to create vases. And if we wanted to kind of smooth this out a little bit more, we can just do a smooth. And once again, I'm on the wrong note, so that puts it in the wrong spot. And that's just gonna smooth out everything a little bit. You can up the strength here lower it however you want. Just gonna smooth everything out a little bit nicer. And if you need to, you can go back here. If you set this lower in the resampler, or actually in, if you set it higher, we're gonna get something a little lower poly, a little um, more rigid. And if I obviously set this lower, it's gonna become super high poly and a lot smoother here. So if you're creating a procedural model, you may want to just expose that setting along with your smooth here and probably your distance on the poly extrude, but you can get some nice looking shapes. I don't see this used very often in pretty much anything, which is a little weird because this is honestly one of the most powerful features, I think, of Houdini is, is the ability to create and use the Vex to create these complex shapes that would be otherwise could be a little bit difficult to create or a little bit less procedural. It'd be pretty easy to create them um, with just a, a line and uh, just draw it on. But this is a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner, makes it a little bit easier to change the shape. So if I wanted to up the neck there just a little bit, super easy to do that. Also pull that down and get some, some weirder shapes going on there. Just really quick and easy to create these different shapes. So I definitely would recommend learning how to use Vex to um, make some pro uh, some procedural models or help it to at least um, up your procedural model game, I guess you would say. But super simple, simple setup, uh, super powerful setup. So definitely take a look into how Vex can help you in your modeling because it's got a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with it probably going to be exploring this more in the future so keep an eye out for that but i do have a bunch of other videos on my channel so check those out if you're interested in learning more about houdini i also have some stuff on redshift cinema 4d and a bunch of stuff on clarice as well if you're interested in any of that make sure you check that out but otherwise thank you guys for watching and have a good day